that was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, it's got to be this story. I mean, the Washington Redskins renaming their team, really? It's so ridiculous. They did announce today that they're going to be renaming their team, and they're not only changing the team's name from Redskins, so it's not like they're going to change from the Redskins to the Braves or the the Indians or something like that. They're actually changing the name and the branding. So there'll be something completely different. A lot of people have suggested the Red Wolves. That's a possibility. I really don't know. They haven't announced that yet, but it'll be something completely unconnected to Native Americans or that kind of branding. They're removing the logo, everything. And this came after just a tidal wave of cancel culture. Sponsors like Nike, uh, which apparently they're the new woke police now, especially after their deals with Colin Kaepernick. Uh, FedEx, who's actually has the naming rights of their stadium, said that they weren't going to support the Redskins anymore. Uh, apparently it wasn't racist when FedEx decided to sponsor them beforehand, but it is racist now. So I think that if they if FedEx actually believes that it's racist, then does that mean that FedEx was supporting racism when they agreed to get the naming rights of the stadium? Uh, the city of D.C. actually said that they won't allow them to build a stadium within the city limits unless they change the name. I mean, uh, cancel culture is not only alive, but thriving, especially around the D.C. area. Before we go any further, I do want to say this full disclosure just to give you some background on this. I'm not an NFL fan. I'm not an NFL fan. I doubt I've ever watched an entire quarter of NFL football. I just like college football. It's nothing against the NFL. I don't think that their evil should be destroyed or anything like that. I don't think that it's dumb or that their fans are dumb. I just don't get it. I like college ball. Never really got into, and part of it's because it's on Sunday and I just can't watch much of it. Uh, but I just never really got into the NFL. I like college football better and I'm, I'm really more of a baseball guy anyway. And so I don't really have any skin in this game. Okay. That was terrible, but really it just, it's not something that, that really speaks to me, but I do care about the cancel culture and I care about this specifically because if there was ever an example of how to do this right, in other words, using the native American imagery and doing it in the correct way, the Redskins are actually a masterclass in that, because if you know the history, you know that this is absolutely in no way something that should be offensive to a Native American, and it turns out that even they don't think that, but we'll get into that in a second. First of all, let's just look at the name on its surface. Let's, let's ignore the football team itself. Is the term redskin, is that inherently offensive? Well, it turns out if you look at the history, actually no. Because the term redskin was coined by Native Americans to refer to themselves and to differentiate between white people. And by the way, they normally used it as a term of endearment. And this is one of the things that I find so hilarious because whenever we're talking about political correctness, the, goal the goalpost is always constantly moving. Like how back in the day, uh, redskin was actually used as the politically correct term when you, they didn't want to use Indian. They didn't like the name Indian. Because, of course, it referred to originally people thought that they were Indians because they thought that America was India. And so that's where that whole thing comes from. That's incorrect. And, and they didn't like that name as much. So they started referring to themselves as Redskins and referring to non-Native American people as Whiteskins. And so they came up with the name. And then that was seen as the name that they liked. They preferred that white people refer to them as Redskins as opposed to Indians. And so... Just the term itself, first of all, isn't wrong. They're the ones that came up with it. And what I also find funny is the same woke left that now is saying that it's wrong to be colorblind. This comes from like the 1619 Project and the book White Fragility. Uh, they're saying that striving for a colorblind society is actually wrong, and that actually is racist. And so it, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging a person's skin color. Now, when I say I strive for colorblindness, and I do, and I think that's a good thing, I'm talking about just not making judgments based on a person's skin, not, not acknowledging that they have different skin than I do. But from the same crowd that is saying that colorblindness now is racist, 
why would there be anything wrong with acknowledging that a person has red skin? This is the reason that you don't hear me use the term African American, because just like saying Indian, it's technically incorrect. I may use it as a reference point every now and then. I don't think African American is a dirty word, but the vast majority of the black people here in Alabama have been here for longer than a lot of the white people, if you look through their family history. I mean, this is just a fact. Most of them have no connection to Africa. In my life, I've known two African Americans. One was an immigrant from Africa who, she was darker complected, but she didn't even really look black. And the other one was just a white guy. He was from South Africa, actually lived uh, not far outside Johannesburg. And so I've actually met two actual African Americans. I just refer to it as black because there's nothing wrong with having black skin. Just like there's nothing wrong with having white skin or brown skin or however you want to categorize it. There's nothing wrong with the skin color. And so I don't see a problem with referring to somebody as a red skin because they have red skin. If somebody referred to me as a white skin, that wouldn't bother me. I'm incredibly white. I'm whiter than mayonnaise. So there's that just on the surface. But second of all, so it's just funny to me that the people that are now claiming that color blindness is wrong are saying that it's wrong to refer to somebody by their skin color. That seems like a contradiction in terms. But another thing that's funny, too, is that everybody tries to go back to, to prove that this is a racial slur, to a ad in a Minnesota newspaper that was offering a reward for any red skin that was brought in, referring to the scalp of Native Americans when they were trying to clear them out for some specific reason. Now, of course, that is horrible. But is it horrible because they referred to them as a red skin? Or is it horrible because they were encouraging and rewarding people for killing other humans? Because to me, that would be the thing to focus on, not the fact that they referred to them as red skin. I'm not saying that nobody ever used the term red skin in a derogatory or demeaning manner, but the vast overwhelming majority of people did it. This is not something that was invented to be used as a racial slur. It was made by the Native Americans to refer to Native Americans, and for a long time it was the name that they preferred. So it's a really, really odd, it's a really strange hill to die on for the left. Now let's go to the more specific part of this. Because we've already talked about how the name Redskin, the word Redskin, isn't in itself bad, but what about the Redskin specifically? The team, the logo, all of that. Was that racist? Was that meant to be some kind of racial slur against Native Americans? Well, it turns out that the name and logo were both intended as tributes. Now, the name originally was the Washington Braves, or sorry, the Boston Braves. The reason that that was confusing is because there was already a Boston Braves that were a baseball team. And, by the way, they later became the Atlanta Braves when the team moved. But there was already a Boston Braves, and back then the team was in Boston, and they were also the Braves, so it got super confusing, and they tried to come up with a name that would work, and they got together, by the way, the head coach of the Redskins at the time, or at the time the Braves, was Native American, and there were several Native American people uh, that were actually players and staff members, and they all met together with the Native American staff and head coach and decided on a name that would work, which was Redskins. So the Native Americans there on staff were the ones that said, yeah, that's the name we'll go with. We want that to be a tribute to us. And then you fast forward a little bit later, the logo is actually modeled after a guy named Walter Blackie Wetzel. Blackie was his nickname. And he insisted that they change the logo from an R to a Native American profile. They were already called the Redskins, but you know how the Redskin logo is just a circle with the feathers on the side? Well, that's because originally it was just that circle with a red R in there. You know, kind of like you would see with the Braves, if they have the B or the Montgomery Biscuits, they'll have the big M. Well, originally, that was their logo. It just had an R. It didn't have a Native American head, the one that we're familiar with today. It was Walter Blackie Wetzel that insisted that they change it, and they modeled the profile. It's not just an imaginary cartoon or a caricature. It's him. It's his face. His profile is the one that they used for that. And this is a guy who grew up on a reservation. He wasn't like an Elizabeth Warren Native American where he just claimed to have some Native American background. This is a guy that 
grew up with Native Americans and actually did grow up on a reservation. And this guy, the more I dug into his history, this is a fascinating dude. So Blackie Wetzel, this is from his obituary in 2003. Quote, Blackie was also very proud of being a, the force behind the Indian Chief logo of the Washington Redskins pro football team. Blackie and his Washington Redskins cap were inseparable. So this guy, which by the way, there's a little bit of narcissism going on there, but I'm going to excuse it because this guy is so cool. He was the model for the Redskin logo, and then they said, you basically never saw him without it on. He just walked everywhere with his hat on. It was inseparable. He was proud of it. He wanted to wear it around. He wanted people to know that he had something to do with the logo being there. And I think that's really awesome. But just the guy's life is fascinating. I don't have time to go into everything and all the details, but the guy was a World War II vet, actually served in World War II, didn't see combat, he served stateside, but he did serve in World War II in the Air Force, and all throughout his college years, he was a boxer. So, I mean, this dude is tough as nails and about as American as it gets. I really, really like this guy. And he also... Passed the test to be an Air Force pilot. This is the reason that he didn't see combat, but unfortunately there was a health complication that kept him from being a pilot. He passed the test. He passed all the registration, which, I mean, you, you got to be a really, really tough dude. you you got to be really on top of stuff to be able to be a fighter pilot in the Air Force in World War II. But he was cleared for all of that. He just wasn't able to go because there was a health complication that arose. It, it didn't actually say what it was, so I'm not sure. But anyway, that kept him from seeing combat. But man, this dude is tough as nails, and he's had such an interesting life. And on top of that, when he went back, not only was he of Native American descent, he was involved in tribal politics. He was named the chairman of the Blackfeet Nation. And then later, he was president of the National Congress of American Indians in 1961. This is the person that Native Americans chose to represent them in Washington in the 1960s. And this is all happening while the civil rights movement is going on. I mean, it was an incredibly turbulent time for our country. Well, 1961 is a little bit early for that, but you know what I'm saying. It's the same kind of uh, era. He actually met with President JFK. He referred to him as, I think, Climbing Eagle was the, or High Eagle was the name that he gave to him. He was friends with JFK, another World War II vet. And so... This is somebody that was a leader in the Native American community, that he spent his life promoting the Native American community. He was American through and through. This is just such an interesting individual, and it kills me that they're just throwing all of that away because of all this politically correct nonsense. And what's crazy about this is not only was this guy, the guy whose picture was actually on the Redskins logo, not offended by this, and, and he saw it as a tribute, but Native Americans themselves saw it that way, too. They thought of it as an honor. Washington Post took a poll in 2016 that showed 9 out of 10 Native Americans that they surveyed said that, the, that they were not offended by the Redskins' name or the logo. And by the way, Washington Post, because they're a very far left-leaning publication, they actually took the survey over and over again trying to get different results. They took it year after year, and every year it came up, nope, Native Americans, not offended by it. Do you know how hard it is to get 9 out of 10 people to agree on freaking anything? I mean, especially in our current political climate, that's basically impossible. Do you get 9 out of 10 people to agree on anything, and all of them were like, nope, not offensive, doesn't bother us. And in fact, they also, in this same survey, they took a sort of like a word association portion of the survey, and they asked people to uh, that, that took the survey, the Native Americans that were involved in this, they asked... So what word would you most associate with it if you're not offended by it? You know what the number one response was? Proud. So it wasn't even indifference. They were proud of this being a tribute. They were proud of the way that Native American culture was put on display as a part of the sports franchise. And it is just a crying shame that that is gone now. That they're just not going to engage in it anymore. And the Wetzel family was devastated by this. I was reading something earlier, and, and it's interesting to me that all my sources on this came from local newspapers because the national news media doesn't want to talk about this. But the Wetzel family, the descendants of Blackie Wetzel, they were actually really upset by this. In fact, his son Lance, 
said, and this is a direct quote, it's disheartening. I wish they really would have considered at least sticking with the imagery. It's a depiction of a real Native American. As a kid growing up and being a Redskins fan, I've always seen that logo. Everyone I've been in contact with on the reservation has been positive about the logo's depiction. They think that's my team because it's a Native American. Native Americans identified with this. They loved this. They saw that as their team. And this is according to a guy that lives on a reservation and his grandfather was the model for this. Let's look, or it, it, let's look at his grandson. His grandson, Jake Wetzel, said this in a statement. Quote, it truly shows who my people are, talking about the logo here. It would be really sad to see it go because the NFL is such a big platform that gives the Blackfeet tribe recognition. See, they're upset that you have now robbed them of their voice. We talk about elevating voices of color. Well, the political left just took a harpoon to that message. This was a giant platform where people could learn about the Blackfeet tribe, that it was something that they could be proud of, that it was part of their family history that they could put on display. And the left, in their attempt to elevate voices of color, wound up doing the exact opposite of that. It wound up destroying a platform that they had that they were proud of. But this is how leftism works. It destroys everything that it touches, whether it's good or not. And this is exactly the same thing that happened with Aunt Jemima. The family of Aunt Jemima was upset. They said, that's my family's legacy. And when you look at the history of Aunt Jemima, I'm not going to go into all that. I actually did a segment on that already. But, I mean, this woman was a freed slave somebody that had overcome great ad adversity. And then later on, the people that became Aunt Jemima, the character, and played her later, uh, every single one that I looked up were amazing women, entrepreneurs. One of them was the first black millionaire, the first female black millionaire in the United States history. And now that legacy is just completely washed away because, well, we've got to be politically correct. And black people, this is one thing that I found absolutely hilarious, Black people bought Aunt Jemima syrup four to one. They were the demographic that by great lengths outweighed every single other demographic in buying it. So apparently it wasn't too racist for the black people that were buying Aunt Jemima syrup. Just like it wasn't too racist for the nine out of ten Native Americans that are proud of the Washington Redskins and liked the fact that their people were represented in a sports team. Is there anything more patronizing than a bunch of angry, woke, white leftists telling the minorities what they're supposed to be offended by, whether it's black people with Aunt Jemima or whether it's Native Americans with the football team saying, no, 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 we know better than you. You should be offended by this. Let us take care of that for you. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that for you because we know you're not you know, smart enough to make your own decisions or think for yourself, so we'll just go ahead and take care of that one for you. What a bunch of arrogant jerks. Seriously, like, I can't think of anything more racist or patronizing than that. If the Native Americans have a problem with it, let them say it. Obviously, they weren't. Just drives me up a wall that they get rid of this. And here's the other thing, too. This, this is something that just applies to the sports team side of this. Why would you assume that somebody naming a sports team or using imagery is something that is specifically meant to be a slur? Because wasn't that the whole Ole Miss thing? Now, granted, I'm not a big fan of Ole Miss, but that might have something to do with the fact that I've got two siblings at Miss State who absolutely despise Ole Miss. Maybe that's playing into it here. But I thought the whole reason that Ole Miss got rid of the Confederate uh, imagery is because people thought of that as, as being a tribute and, and being Ole Miss basically saying, yeah, we're pro-Confederacy. Which, I mean, you could make the argument that it was. But if that's the case, then why are you assuming that this one is racist because it's trying to portray Native Americans in the same way? If, if that was a tribute to the Confederacy, and you were saying that, that was wrong because it's promoting the Confederacy, why would you not assume that the Redskins are promoting Native American culture by doing that? When you name a team something, I realize that a bunch of the woke leftists don't understand how sports work. But generally speaking, when you name a team something, that's because you like that thing and want to support it. 
the reason that I pull for the Braves is because I think the Braves are a really freaking cool mascot to have. But, you know, with other things, with Auburn, I have tiger stuff up in my living room because it's cool to be the tigers. Tigers are cool, they're strong, you know, there's something you can look up to and you want to cheer for the tigers to win, just like people want to cheer for the Redskins to win. Whenever you name a sports team after something, that should be considered a tribute. Now, I don't know what that says about the uh, Duke Blue Devils. And maybe I got a little animosity there because I'm also a Kentucky fan. But nonetheless, <laughs> I, think that, I think that's a little sketchy. Uh, but even with like the Devil Rays, which I'm a fan of, I had no problem with them keeping the name the Devil Rays. They, cha- they shortened it to the Rays. But I mean, it's it's an animal. It's a it's called the Devil Ray. Like nobody thought you were supporting the devil by putting the Devil Rays on it. So all this stuff is just so stupid. Like the reason that they put it on there is because they liked Native Americans and wanted that imagery. And hey, that's the thing that we can root for. That's the thing that we want to win. The idea that it was somehow meant as a slur is just stupid. You don't see a bunch of white people of Nordic descent saying, oh, it's so terrible that the Minnesota Vikings represent our people incorrectly or they do it cartoonishly, which they actually do have a cartoon of a Viking on there. Again, I don't have a problem with it. I don't think any of the Nordic people have a problem with it. I'm not Nordic, or at least I don't think so. Uh, but, you know, you don't see the French upset at the Xavier Musketeers. Oh, this is the racist foot- or basketball team, because, you know, Xavier basically doesn't have a football team. They might actually, I don't know. They're just not very well known. They're known for basketball. Uh, You don't see the French people getting all upset about that because it's a tribute. My family is descended from a line of knights in Britain. I don't get upset when a sports team refers to themselves as the knights. That's really cool. Frankly, I wish there were a team of knights that I could pull for because I like medieval stuff. This whole thing, everybody's just getting way too oversensitive about it especially when something's supposed to be a tribute, something that's a good thing. But what this is really about, what it all boils down to, this is really about a bunch of angry, white, woke leftists that want to pat themselves on the back for doing something good. It has nothing to do with the Native Americans or how they feel, because if it did, then they wouldn't have gotten rid of it, for the reasons I just explained. This is so a bunch of woke white people can make themselves feel better. That's all it's about. That's frankly all most of political correctness is about. It's so they can pat themselves on the back and tell themselves how good they are for doing something like this. Even if the people that they were protecting don't like it. Don't kid yourselves, leftists, that this is some kind of victory or this somehow helps the Native American people. This was about you and making yourselves feel good because you don't care about anybody else. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel Otherwise, you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.